What's up, guys? It's KB. Make sure you subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. Click the bell icon down below so you don't miss a single video from us. And thanks for tuning in to another video from Underground Sports Philadelphia. Now let's get into it. Philadelphia, baby. You're going to love it. Best sports fans in the world. Actually the worst, but that's what makes them the best. What is going on, everybody? Welcome in to episode number 533 underground sports philadelphia presented by city of vineland it's kb coming at you from underground studios where i feel like i'm six feet under and joining me reluctantly my my typical sunday night monday episode co-host the host with the most the people's champ and celtics fan Extraordinaire, Mr. Patty Pence. Kyle, I'm not just the champ. Is not just a a fan. Okay, I'm a super fan, according to my AIM screen name, Celt Super Fan. Oh wait, so <clears throat> today is even more special. I mean, I feel fantastic. Uh, the champ is feel real good. I had a rep here. I know I'm gonna take Cena in ECW level heat right now. But goddamn, this is this is my man. It's my man right now, and you just—I I knew this was coming. I knew that the Celtics were going to move on. So did we. So did we. So did we. I, I just—it it was written in the stars essentially after that bowl. I forget which game it was where I it's knew that. The Celtics, no, we well, not that six before it. Put you away, and then. Well, that too. I mean, I was thinking before, but no, it, it was a really great day for it to be a Celtics fan and this team woke up. It, it was awesome. You know, they finally, the, the better team won, Kyle, I'm going to say that the better 100%. team won. 100%. And that's where I want to, I, I want to say this in a kind of a nice way, as much as I'm you know, bringing in my little champ strut, uh, is that the Sixers have the, I would say, you know, Embiid, Harden, two of the best in the league, hands down as much as, you know, unbiasedly. But there's a drop off, and with the Celtics, like they're just a better cohesive unit together. Everyone plays their the role. Funny so part well. is in this game today, the surrounding pieces stepped up. Yeah, they did. We'll get into all that. We'll get into Game Six and why we even had to play today. Uh, we'll get into the Phillies and the um, the <laughs> just absolute disdain and hatred that they have for the Colorado Rockies now. I mean, I'm here for it, but very strange. Uh, built up tension. First series, the Phillies have won in Colorado in a decade. Wow. Which is a wild stat to read. Um, we'll get into the NFL schedule release, some of the schedule release videos. And uh, shout out to the Swifties, Taylor Swift, confirming this weekend that she's a fan of who? That the song lyric was about what? We'll get into that as well. Uh, but before we get started, make sure you guys are following us on the socials at Underground PHI, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook.com, slash Underground Sports PHI. Uh, if you want to watch every Wednesday night show live with me and Matt, uh, it's twitch.tv slash Underground Sports PHI. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at KBIZZL311 and KBIZZLE11 on Instagram. And follow Pitts on Twitter at Pat underscore Pitts and at Pitsy35 on the gram. Uh, subscribe to the podcast feed, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, this is a safe space for all Sixers fans. I know we are all uh, clinically depressed. I know Matt has reached this point with this team two years ago after the Hawks series. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know where I'm at, uh, during this episode, uh, with this organization as it seems like the, even the ownership group doesn't truly care because they were more worried about buying an Eagles division rival football team this week. Uh, but go subscribe to the podcast feed, leave a five-star review, support your local independent podcasts and media people in these trying times and always, but go subscribe. It really does go a long way for helping more people find the show helps us continue to grow towards our goal of making this our full-time jobs, all that good stuff. Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at underground sports, Philadelphia. 
Pitts has been doing the Lord's work of getting Bostonians to subscribe to the YouTube channel that is a Philly sports, uh, you know. Oh, do I have a story base. for you? Be, I, do I have a story for you for that uh, from last night? YouTube.com yeah. slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. That's where you get full video episodes of this podcast twice a week. You get shorts, clips, live streams interviews the whole nine yards it's all on our youtube channel pits we're currently at 457 subscribers right now on that road to 500 before memorial day which you guys as we record this it's the 14th but by the time you're listening to this it's the 15th you have two weeks two weeks we need math is hard uh 43 of you to subscribe in the next two weeks otherwise there may be some repercussions. We Go subscribe. Gonna, get us to 500 subscribers. Help us grow. We're also on that road to 1,000 subscribers as well. Uh, YouTube.com slash at Underground Sports Philadelphia. Plus, when we get to 1,000 and over 1,000, we have a very special project that we'll be announcing. Uh, so the sooner we get there, the sooner that gets announced, the sooner more fun takes place on. on the YouTube channel. Be a friend, tell a friend. Go subscribe. Smash the like button. Ring the bell icon. All that good stuff. As I mentioned, this show presented by the City of Vineland, uh, the City of Vineland Municipal Calendar, which your calendars are all cleared up now because all we have is Phillies baseball and the Philadelphia Union, uh, which there was also union stuff we have to talk about. It seems like Philadelphia and Colorado just not on the same page this weekend. No, not at all. Lots of brawls. Lots of brawls. There was a brawl in the union game. Jesus. We'll get into that as well. so tame. Forgot to bring that up. Uh, but the City of Vineland Municipal Calendar features city-organized, city-sponsored, and city-affiliated events that are of public interest. The calendar, which is accessible at vinelandcity.org, is a good way for residents and visitors to build awareness, remain engaged with city government, and participate in local events. You can also follow the City of Vineland on social media via their Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube pages. Through these tools, you can stay connected to the community and get important announcements about programs and services offered by the city. Finally, New Jersey, where it's always growing season. And big thank you to Maine Auto LLC, Security 21 Security Systems, Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated, and the Dental Wellness Center of Vineland for their continued support of this podcast. Well, Pitts, we we touched on it a little bit already, but the Sixer season has come to an end once again in the second round. Uh, just the case outside of the Mickey Mouse bubble year where it happened in the first round. Nobody counts the bubble year. Uh, the Sixers in the second round have been customary practice. 2018, second round exit. 2019, the Kawhi shot. Uh, 2021, Ben Simmons forgets how to play basketball. And we lose to the Hawks. Uh, And then tonight, as we record this on Sunday, um, they just flat out quit and didn't have their two best players perform in the biggest spotlight that they needed them to perform in. And the Sixers lose 112 to 88 when the game first shot of the second half tied the game at 55. And the Sixers were outscored, whatever the math is there, and only scored 33 points the rest of the fucking game. Yeah. It's brought to you by our March partners at PHI Apparel Company. They provide unique designs and high-quality clothing for the great fans of Philly and our podcast network. Working on some new designs uh, for the spring and summer. I know I've been saying that for a while, but we're hopefully going to get those up in the next couple of weeks. With their original designs for all, there's no doubt you'll stand out in the crowd. It's full-blown Philly season. Go get your Phillies merch now. Go get your Union merch. Gear up for the Eagles season that's right around the corner. Get your Eagles merch. And get your podcast merch. Uh, the Philly dog shirt, fantastic shirt. Go yeah, get that thing. That. Listeners can use our promo code underground for 10% off any apparel. When you shop online at PHI apparel.co that's PHI apparel.co code underground for 10% off your order. It's one of the most effective and direct ways to support everything we're doing. Go get your merch. Um, like I mentioned, uh, Let's let's even rewind a little bit. Game six happened on Thursday. Thursday. So it was after uh, we had recorded on Wednesday. Sixers lose that game at home, ninety-five to eighty-six. Too high profile of a bell ringer. It was Quest Love. He's from Philly. He's a prominent name. You, you, it was over before it started there. 
The Sixers had that game in hand. They should have easily won that game. They were down 16 twice and battled back. They were up by two or three with like five minutes left and just could not play the defense that they played for three and a half quarters. They let Jason Tatum go and score one point for three and three quarters of the game. And then he just goes on an absolute berserk run and doesn't get heat checked and scores 16 points down the stretch to catapult Game 7 into existence. And then Game 7 happens where these are your final stat lines for the Philadelphia 76ers. Tobias Harris, 19 points, 5 rebounds, played 40 minutes, stepped up. He, he almost 10 x his point total from Game 6, where he scored a whopping 2 points in 43 minutes. Wow, that's P.J. Tucker numbers, really. P.J. Tucker stepped up in a big way in this game. He started out point, Double-digit points from P.J. Tucker in 20 minutes. I was in shock. I was in shock. I was, I was living. I was, thri- I, was, I was levitating every time he drained a corner three. 11 points in 20 minutes from P.J. Dog Tucker. Tyrese Maxey, 17 points in 42 minutes. Not the most ideal situation, but he, he played well. He played 17 fine. is good. That's, that's 17, good. 4 assists, and 3 rebounds. That's a solid stat line. Stat line. Your other two starters, James Harden, in 41 minutes in this game. 6 rebounds, 7 assists, 9 points. Joel Embiid, 38 minutes, 8 rebounds, 1 assist, 15 points. Yeah, uh, Kyle. Remember what I used what I said on the Derby stream uh, when we talk in the Yard of Streams headquarters here with DJ and other underground peeps about James Harden and how he's great and just an unbelievable player, but you know, just missing that little little clutch, little next step. James Harden played Game I'm Seven like he already had a reservation for a nightclub that he just was ready to go to. Yes, dude. There's so many around here that are pretty hope, pr- pretty high profile. No, I'm saying he already had a flight book to go to Houston. Oh, you're saying he said fuck Boston? Like he's he? I'm just he going looked to... like he was completely checked out this oh. entire game. Jeez, the golden banana is pretty good. I'm just, I thought he would go there. Uh, now, I do. I'm not saying that because I think, quite frankly, outside of one call, shockingly. Scott Foster called a pretty solid game for once in his life. I thought it was a pretty, like, fairly called game. You got to let the boys play in game seven. You can't you can't be Nick Ticky Tacky, the, and I thought they did a good job The of momentum swinging moment in this game, though, not saying that this was the cause, because you still have to step up regardless of this happening. The flagrant one call on James Harden against Jalen Brown. Switched the entire course of the game. The entire momentum shifted in favor of the Celtics. It should not have been a flagrant. I'll I'll give you it should have been a tech. There should have been a technical foul, maybe. But also, I have to I have to call into question Jalen Brown here. Buddy, Why? Buddy. You have been wearing a mask to protect your face this entire postseason. And you decide to take it off. You're you're asking for it, like you're you're taking the one piece of protective, like, Guard. lack of a better term, armor. <laughs> yeah, off yeah. of your face. And if you're gonna go and play in the paint defense and try to take the ball away or block a shot, you kind of gotta expect your face is gonna be vulnerable. Oh yeah, you're putting yourself in harm's way for sure. Why he took that mask off? is beyond me. It also looked like he flopped a little bit at first, and then I saw his nose was bleeding. I was like, okay, maybe he did take a little arm to the face. But from your perspective, take all bias aside from it. Like I said, would I have been fine if it was a technical foul called? Sure. There's blood. Makes sense. For that to be a flagrant one was kind of obscene. Yeah. Did you think it was... was too harsh of a call uh i thought it was weird you know i beyond everything that's happened um 
you know, I, I it's a foul because he did bleed. Uh, so there was contact there, but it also I wasn't think... incidental like they said it was. That's like, what I'm saying. He it was it, losing like... the ball going up to the rim because he just wasn't dialed in today. Um, and his arms like flailed as he's going yeah. up because he's like trying to reach for the ball and you're in that moment. It was not an incidental thing, which I, no, I disagreed yeah. with that reasoning that they said too. Yeah, I agree that in that sense. I just didn't think it was that big of a deal. I think it's just the it was game seven going up for the ball, you know, there things aren't going to be smooth when it comes to, you know, tackle getting the ball, like all that fundamentals. That's what I'm looking for. It's like, there's no fundamentals there. You're going to just be flailing the entire game set, whatever you have to do. So to me, it was like, all right, like weird call to establish a little bit of power back, but like, I don't know. It worked in our favor. So I can't be, I can't be complaining all that much. Sixers as a team. In game seven, shot eight of 37 from three. Yeah, they, they, this is a bigger discussion, too, Kyle. I want your thoughts. It's like the NBA changing and becoming more of a three point league. Fine, it's great, whatever. But teams hurt from it a lot. The phrase live by the three, and then the other side of the coin is you die by the three. You know, you. They should be able to adapt on the fly, in my eyes, when that, you know, you're not hitting your shots from three. Step in. Just take a couple steps in. I know it's not that extra point, and threes are cool, but twos get you on the board. Twos cut down that lead or enhance it. I don't understand it. And if the paint's open, too, that's a lot of things. No one wants to go in the paint anymore. Take it to the rack. Slam it home, dude. Like, I, I hate it. My dad and I have. Dickie Pitts and I talk about this a lot in the sense. Put in perspective, the Celtics shot 15 of 33 from three, which is 45.5%. Right. Sixers 21.6%. Damn, couldn't fucking miss. It, they just looked absolutely checked out and lifeless in this game. There was nothing that was going to happen. The fact that it was a two point game at halftime was a miracle, the way that Embiid and Harden were playing. And then for them to just absolutely lay an egg, score 10 points in the third quarter, which is the, I believe I saw the stat, the fewest points in a postseason quarter in the shot clock era. Wow. That's just. Or something of that. That's ilk. sad, bro. That's sad. That's really sad. They hate the. To see it. The negligence that this team just continues to put us through. And if you're watching on YouTube, I highly recommend. I'm wearing a, a, a blazer. I'm wearing sunglasses because this is a funeral for this iteration of the Sixers, in my opinion. I think things are going to be drastically different when this summer rolls around. I don't know what's going to happen, but gear up because it's going to be a long fucking summer. I know he he coached relatively well throughout the playoffs. Doc's got to go. He said that. after the game, I still have 2 years on my contract this that and the third. He's going to get scapegoat. He's better coaches were fired this yeah, season. Yeah, bro. What the fuck what happened? I woke for, up this morning like and, like, two were gone. Two, like, really good coaches. Yeah. Like, better coaches were fired for less. Unnecessary, in my eyes. Unnecessary yeah. firings. That's all I'm going to say on it here. But, yeah, unnecessary. Um, and Doc should be absolutely fired. Yeah. Bring him home. This bring, is the 10th time Doc Rivers has blown a 3-1 or 3-2 lead in the postseason. I know you love Doc Rivers. I love him. We love him in Boston. But you have to admit that roster carried him to his lone coaching championship. And oh, we have seen sure. the real Doc Rivers coach in his time with the Clippers and the Sixers. I think Doc Rivers with that team and that championship, that was, I think, your your most ideal situation um, where you have, yeah, the star power, but the star power co cohesing or combining into the team element of uh, you know he used the phrase ubuntu which means family 
and, and like that was something a theme throughout that whole season and it feels like since that that team or that iteration era of him on the Celtics he has not found that anywhere else you know when he goes to the Clippers it was always just something off there he wasn't you know which they, shouldn't have been the yell. case like they had Exactly. All the pieces to be a legitimate like title contender and oh, the Clippers failed. should have made at least a final or two appearance at least in his tenure. The the stars that they had on that team, and then he comes to uh, Philly, and with even uh, better stars, but even better stars in Philly. I mean, I'll take bias aside here. James Harden is a top fifteen player in the league, and Joel the Embiid, best player outside of. Who? Garnett and Pierce are probably the two best players Doc's coached. I think Embiid's number three. Yeah, I think. All right, I don't like him either. But you gotta, you gotta put Ray Allen's name on there. Yeah, but how how long was Ray Allen there with Doc? The entire time. But he left after what two years to go to Miami? No, it was, no, he was there. He was there. He he when he went to Miami, that was the same season Pierce and Garnett were traded. He didn't resign. And Beat and Ray was, Allen are just like in a different like category of player in my book, though. Like Ray Allen's yeah. like Ray Allen is that dying breed of like three point specialists don't exist anymore, really. Yeah, except and, off the bench, and, and not even a three point specialist. I would say just a shooting specialist. The dude yeah. is an absolute bucket every time he steps on the floor. So yeah, I, and then you have Embiid. Regardless, Embiid's a top five player he's ever coached, and you throw Chris Paul in that. You throw Chris Paul, and then you have Embiid too. I just Harden, like Harden, I, I, they, they could have got him there. And this, I, it was a good young Sixers team to me that had a lot of potential to be not a Cinderella or like more underdog, underdog that just gets to the finals somehow because they're dogs, gritty, all that. We could have beat the Heat in in six or seven. You could have easily beat the Heat. I, w- I would give you – you are the Sixers are a better team than the Heat, hands down. I think the Heat are – With the way the Heat coach. are banged up right now, that's the only reason. Like, Hero yeah. being out, the Oladipo being out, Jimmy's banged up. Like, the Sixers, I think, would have had a much better time managing the Heat than they did against the Celtics. This was easily the uh, hardest matchup the Sixers would have had until they got to the finals if they were to have gotten there. Agreed. I would agree with that. And yeah. even then, the Celtics would have been a more difficult matchup. Yes. That's... That's... Kyle, what am I wearing? Like... What, what, what am I wearing? You, you mentioned your outfit. I think we just... For, for yeah, ben. you're wearing a fucking Jason Tatum. No, but like, what's his also? His name is you know King of Boston, um, the next goat. Um, Let's not go that far. Oh, uh, I, I just, I just like some continuity. We we talked about your attire. Obviously, we had the championship, and I'm wearing the king. Now I'll stop. Now I, I don't want to. It's, it's just the same old song and dance for this team. That. Like we, we get hyped up for the Sixers every single year. We, we buy into this team because they, they switch around the, the ancillary pieces around Joel and most recently around James Harden now. Like, this is full year one of James Harden and everything. But I hate to break it to you. Like, James Harden's not going to get any better than what he was this year. Like, this year, I think, was an underrated season from James Harden. Led the league in assists. Still averaged 20 points a game. Like, he was all-star caliber player. Didn't get voted to the all-star game doesn't make sense. Not that I care about that kind of stuff, but it's weird. No, but it's like, just another element. I get, I get what um, you mean. Like, James Harden's getting older every single year. And, yes, that sounds dumb because everybody's getting older every single no, year. No, but... I'm getting older by 10 years every single year because of this team. Yeah, dude, you're aging rapidly. The, the buy-in from the fans, like, it, it almost feels like Sixers fans care more about this team than the actual team does. And that's pathetic. Like, that's a pathetic state of affairs, is the fact that we we give our all and buy into this team, and we wait until Christmas to be like, okay, that's when we, like, start, because that's truly when it feels like the NBA season starts to begin with, because we also have the Eagles' success going on, so we got to give their attention. And now the Phillies are back, so you got to give attention to the Fightins. The Sixers are slowly slipping away 
from people's trust, loyalty, and it's starting to feel like the Wells Fargo Center might just be cursed because we have the Flyers whole situation going on right now, which we'll get into yeah. that as well with the new hirings and my thoughts on that, and I have Dylan's thoughts on that. The Sixers just continually fail to get out of the second round. The fact that the 2012 Andre Iguodala, which I love Iggy, he's one of my favorite players ever, but the fact that that team, an eight-seed Sixers team in 2012, got as far as any Joel Embiid team has is pathetic. They went seven games against the Celtics in 2012. I was at game three of that series when we lost. The fact that the Sixers, with Joel Embiid, who is easily, easily, and this is no disrespect to Dr. J, to Allen Iverson, Joel Embiid is the most talented basketball player I have ever seen with my own two eyes play for the Philadelphia 76ers. Why, yeah. Like, hands down. He is, he is unbelievable. He's going to go down as an all-time Sixer. But oh, today's yeah, performance is such a, a knock on his resume because this was the moment. This was the moment you step up and flip the double bird to the entire league, show them why the process worked, show them why you were the MVP of the regular season, and let's not forget, it's a regular season award. I don't want to hear any shit about the MVP thing. It doesn't matter. It's a regular season thing. You show them why you're the MVP, though, and you come up small in the biggest moment of your career, arguably, and it's the same old song and dance. 2019 was the Kawhi shot. 2021 was the Hawks series, and now this one where you just fall flat on your face when you should have won game three, you should have won game six, and this game seven wouldn't have had to happen. But here we are doing the same old song and dance with this Sixers team, and it just feels like there is no way out. This was the whole purpose of the process, was to make sure that getting out of the second round happened, that you got to conference finals, that you got to the NBA finals, that you got the key players in place to help you get over that hump. And where are we? We're right back where the 2012 Sixers were, the last team right before the process started, still failing to get out of the fucking second round. That's tough. That is, I know. I this just... team emotionally killed my brother-in-law, my co-host, not literally, but emotionally. No emotion. Emotional damage! Him. Literally destroyed him in 2021. He did not watch basketball, and he is the biggest basketball junkie I know. He did not watch basketball for a long time. And he is just completely fed up with this team because it's the same thing year in and year out, and nothing feels like it's going to change because there's organizational and institutional rot with this organization because Joshua Harris, he, he just he doesn't care about the team. You look at all the other teams in Philadelphia that have had success lately, the Union, the Phillies, the Eagles. Their ownership groups or their owners care. Their GMs and their front offices care. Their coaches care. The players care. They get it. And this team just feels like somewhere – in that chain of command, there's an emotional and just a, a lack of understanding, dis, understanding disconnect. And it's not going – like, your ownership group owns the New Jersey Devils, the Sixers, and are now purchasing the Washington fucking Commanders. When you have a team that is trying to get over the hump of getting out of the goddamn second round of the playoffs – you're worried about buying a fucking NFL team to add it to your fucking real estate portfolio. It's yeah, just right. a joke, man. It's so sad to see that, like, on the outside looking in, that you have an ownership group that just, uh, you know. They don't care. They and then care they're trying about... to bargain for this new arena in in the city. Like, first of all, fuck no. Like, Keep that shit out. It's going to be an absolute nightmare if that happens. And what have you done to earn a new arena? Not a fucking Nothing. thing. Nothing. Nothing. Like, they are just so disconnected and so oblivious to everything around them with this team. I It, it will be a great day when they eventually sell the team and we actually get an owner or an ownership group that gives a flying fuck about the Sixers. Because then, maybe then... There will be a connection to the city. Maybe then 
will have an owner that cares and wants to actually see this team succeed rather than it just being a, a fucking HGTV show where you're trying to flip an organization for profit. It, see, it's you have such, you know, the both ends of the spectrum here with obviously the Sixers ownership doing what they're doing, but then look at what the Eagles have done. I mean, talk about that front office and that ownership group, like how much they care about the Eagles' success and look where it's got them. I mean, I've never in my life, I have not seen the Eagles so I would say focused on a one, you know, a single target as to getting back, not only getting back to the Super Bowl, but winning it. And after last year, it seems like that left a more than sour taste in their mouth by their actions in the off season and their signings and whatnot. It's the dichotomy of it is incredible. It really and is. Even look at the Phillies. Like I look know at the Phillies. It's a great we, other great we, example. We joked about it when John Middleton went into the WIP studio and said he's gonna, you know, he's gonna take back his fucking trophy. Like he said that to the morning show at WIP. I think it was in 2018. It was like right before, right after we signed Jake Arietta, and it was like, okay, let's let's get fired up. This is the turning point. Like we're bringing in big free agents now, and it's very funny to look back on that because that was the early stages of this podcast when we were banging hand over fist for Jake fucking Arietta to sign with this team. Mm -hmm. But you look at the the progress, and yes, like have they had to build this team by buying it? Sure, but it's baseball. Oh. There's no salary cap. It works. You went out and made the proper moves. You brought in the correct scouting team. Brian Barber has completely flipped the way that this team scouts talent for the draft and helps build prospects up. You're finally getting prospects in the system to come and contribute. That's why Alec Bohm is on this team. That's why Bryson Stott is on this team. That's why you have the people who are able to scout during the trade deadline. You bring in a Brandon Marsh to this team who's 25 years old and is going to be your center fielder for the next decade. Like, that's the the core values of this team that we we longed for during the Phillies rebuild and it just wasn't there because they didn't have the right people in place. You bring the right people in place. You bring in Uncle Davey Dombrowski to do the thing. Yeah, and you was, know better than anybody what Dave Dombrowski I, can do I, for an organization. That's why I just nodded with you and agreed. Like, look, that that's a power move to bring him in. And look the fact that the us. Phillies went on that magical run last year and know what it takes to get back to the World Series now and know that they can do it as a wild card because before last year they hadn't done it in team history and they have been a, they are one of the longest running franchises in pro American sports they've been around since the 1800s that's why they're one of the few teams with 10,000 losses because they've been around for generations literally generations i learned about it in school they also feel like they have that sour taste in their mouth, unfinished business, and they want to do whatever it takes to get back to that mountaintop and get over the mountaintop and win another World Series. That's the difference between the Eagles and even look at the Union. Like They are just the organizational constant of success and consistency and knowing what it takes to win. Those three teams have the right mindset, have the right brain trust in place, We'll see what happens with the Flyers, and we'll talk about them later on in the show with their new uh, you know, front office people. But the Sixers just do not have it. I don't know what it's going to take to fix it. They're eliminated again. Prepare for a long-ass fucking summer, everybody, because that's what it's going to be with this team. I don't know when the next time after Wednesday that we'll talk about the Sixers unless some big breaking news happens. But right now, the Sixers are on a probation from being discussed wow. following wow. Wednesday night's show. Because wow. what? why do we have to give our You're passion, right. our uh, emotion, and our just mental well-being into a team that doesn't care about its fans, doesn't care about success right now? And I love Joel Embiid to death. I love him to death. But man, today was a failure. Today was an absolute failure. And it's going to be something that this organization 10, 15 years from now looks back on and wonders what if. What if yeah. we closed out in game six? What if we won game three? It's just the same old song and dance. And I don't know if they'll ever figure it out 
with this current iteration of the Sixers. Taking the sunglasses off. Shout out to Tomahawk Shades. It's really bright down here. Holy crap. Yeah. That's, that's, welcome. Speaking of Tomahawk Shades, I just got the new the new shades in for the summer. These are fantastic. They had their anniversary sale uh, earlier this week, and I, I cashed in there. Uh, Tomahawk Shades has been rocking with us since 2020, and uh, they're the best in the game, best small batch eyewear in the game, from sunglasses to blue light glasses to prescription lenses, ski goggles, they've got it all. TomahawkShades.com. It's owned by four former professional athletes, Kyle Harrison, Chris Hogan, Daniel Descalzo, John Jay. I've been seeing a ton of MLB players lately, Pitsy, wearing Tomahawk Shades. Oh, like one right. of my favorites, and I hate that he plays for the Marlins, but I love him as a player. Jazz Chisholm, been wearing the Tomahawk Shades a ton lately because John Jay is one of the coaches down there for the Marlins. Uh, but you guys can rep Tomahawk Shades as well. Protect your eyewear going into the summer months when you're inside watching your shows, movies, uh, your favorite sports teams, staring at screens, just on your phone in general. You'll feel better. You'll sleep better. TomahawkShades.com. Use promo code USP for 25% off at checkout. That's promo code USP at TomahawkShades.com for 25% off your order. Pitts, let's get into the fightings. The yeah. Fight and Phils, they um they win another series. Look at that. Who would have thunk? You know, it's it's almost like it's a long season, everybody. It's a long season. It's kinda long. They're back at five hundred. They were above five hundred for uh, a day yesterday. Um, but they're back at five hundred and I'm happy. This team is find their groove. Ranger Suarez is back, which was we're great happy. to see. Um but I sent you the clips from today's game. The Phillies unfortunately lost four nothing, so they don't not with, sweep not the, with the fight they had. I'll tell you that they, they had Pitts, more I fight. Want your general reaction to those videos of Bryce Harper just being the guy. Yo, that's a dog. Uh, I'm sorry. Like I, that made me love Bryce Harper so much more, and he is Philly through and through. The fact that he's getting that hyped, you know, yelling at the fans. You know, just being like, oh, what happened? You know, playing that game with them. And then just the, you know, a little comment like this, you know, like clapping, you know, a little, you know, taunting, we'll say, just set him off. Yep. And to me, that is a guy who he, he wears his heart in his sleeve, literally. And just, you need that fight out of a star player. It just, it gets the entire team behind you I, I loved it I, I I'm a big fan of it so the Phillies win uh on Friday six to three to uh to secure the first victory in the series after sweeping the Toronto Blue Jays in a two-game series and winning uh the finale game against your Boston Red Sox last Sunday so the Phillies win streak comes to an end at five games but they won five out of their last six that's what matters you want to win the series um Two wins against the Blue Jays, beat the Rockies on Friday, beat the Rockies yesterday. Bryce Harper hits a, a gut punch of a home run to down them. And like you said, from the tweets from the beat writers that were out in Colorado, apparently like a group of like teenagers or like college age kids were heckling Bryce Harper, saying things to him. And I got to say this, there's not much that sets Bryce Harper off the way that he was set off. So whatever those guys were saying or whatever those people were saying, to Bryce Harper had to have been a little over the top just a smidge because Bryce hits that bomb and then from the dugout goes what happened fucking losers <laughs> you have to set Bryce Harper off in a way for that to occur there's just no ifs ands or buts about that then today bench is clearing brawl as uh, the pitcher from the Rockies, I'm blanking on his name, so I'm going to click on the box score right here. Uh, Jake Bird, which I wish I could flip him the bird because he's just a he's a loser. The bird's loser the word. Energy. The bird is the word. I want a bird, bird, bird. Bird is the word. I want a bird, bird, bird. <laughs> don't, don't you know about the bird? Well, everybody knows about the bird. I want a bird, bird, bird. He walks back to the dugout. He's kind of being smug. Is talking shit to the Phillies dugout. Starts clapping into his mitt like 
sarcastically. Kyle Schwarber hits him back with it and is, like, getting back at him. Bryce Harper zooms out of the dugout, ready to fucking throw down with the entire Rockies organization with one arm. And, again, you had to have said something that set Bryce Harper off for him to react the way that he did. And then, during the scrum, there's a video that got clipped that Bryce Harper's like, all of you, fucking loser organization. And I love it. Give me all the rivalries in baseball. This is what baseball needs is just pure hatred for other teams that are just irrelevant. And I love that this could be the spark of a Phillies-Rockies rivalry again, which I hated the Rockies back in 2007 when they swept us out of the playoffs. And I, I, I enjoy just fabricated rivalries in baseball because it is such a long season. It gives you storylines and Bryce Harper hating the Rockies as the Phillies go on to win their first series in Colorado in a decade. is just a beautiful thing. And I hope it's just a spark for this team as they head to San Francisco to try and continue this hot streak that they're on. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice to see that. At least we get them winning all that. It's nice. I love the fight, I love the vigor, and I love the way that this team is playing right now. Ranger Suarez being back is great, and I just want to continue to see this team stockpile wins. Like, it is ever so closely approaching Memorial Day, um, and the Phillies are at 500. They're 20-20, and 20. they're five games out of first place as the Braves got swept this weekend by the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, the Mets are... 20 and 21 low Mets and they've lost like 16 out of their last 21 and the Marlins are starting to come back down to earth they're 20 and 21 the stolen franchise 17 and 23 going into today Pitts, the Phillies were one of six organizations in the National League with a winning record it's almost like it's a long ass season and you can't let one series or one game affect the way you feel about your team yeah I I'm so against all the people who get so hot about standings in May. I mean, let's you got to really look at it from a wider lens that what you do in May means diddly squat when it comes to crunch time in base in, during baseball season. Like we haven't even I don't even think we've been able to vote for the All-Stars yet. No. That won't so, open up until probably early june and that's when you really can start like all right who's good who's gonna make that run like this is just preliminary all right the best this way to describe up. it memorial day is your first benchmark yes yeah, benchmark. which is like a 1a benchmark followed by the june one because i forget if we talked about this but matt and i talked about it on the last episode like whenever you look at stats that like you watch on like mlb network or espn whenever they show stats it's always like a since June 1st with baseball. Like, that always seems to be the little thing in the corner. It's like, here's this person's uh, batting average, their runs, hits. All. Since June 1, they've done this. And that seems to be kind of like where people set the benchmark for baseball in terms of like, okay, this person's off to a good start. They're having a great season. It's since June 1, and then you follow it from there. You don't really count what happens in the first two months, which – I'm going to say you got to count it for Bryce Harper. Dude, you, know, you count it for Bryce Harper because you shouldn't even have been there. Like because, you, you, my you, goodness, you does ESPN be. look absolutely stupid with their preseason like power rankings of like best players in the league? They said Harper was going to be like uh, 53rd or 55th best player this year and hit 230 and 12 home runs and wouldn't be back till July. He started his first game 0 for 3 with three strikeouts, and since then it's hitting over 400. That's insane. That is that's just wild. It's absurd. Literally absurd. So the Phillies are uh, they're they're in a good place right now. They're twenty and twenty through the first forty games. I'm not mad about it, especially when Ranger Suarez just got back. Bryce Harper came back May second, missed the whole first month of the year. Reese Hoskins has not played this year, which we knew in spring training wasn't going to happen. Derek Hall still not back. Trey Turner's not playing like himself. I would love to see Trey Turner just take a mental health day. Not that it's like a mental health thing, but just take a day off. Take a day off because he's not been himself. Um, things could be worse. 
And it could be somewhere. way worse. You could be the Oakland A's. You could be the Oakland A's. Yeah, let's be real. You could really be the Oakland A's. Like if that's someone Things where could be worse with the, the Phillies season. right now, and the fact that they're at twenty you and see, twenty no. and battling through everything that's popped up. Couldn't be happier, you know, with with the way that things are going. Their next series starts on Monday, uh, three out in San Francisco before they come home uh, for six games at home against three against the Cubs, three against the Diamondbacks, and then the ten game road gauntlet against the Braves, Mets, and Nationals, uh, which will be really important games because NL East games are way more important th- this year than they have been in years past. And that Memorial Day weekend series against the Braves is going to be a doozy i'm excited for it and hopefully the phillies and braves are that much closer in the standings when that series rolls around so that they truly mean a lot and maybe the phillies propel themselves into first place uh but Pitts, it is time for everybody's favorite game it is the nl east run differential oh brought to you by our awesome friends over at wasted wedge the best new party trick that you can pull out of your bag quite literally on the market a new age of golf has arrived everyone and if you're looking to be the talk and envy of your group and create memories with your friends and family look no further than the lineup of wasted wedge products and merchandise available to you at wastedwedge.com these wasted wedges are a blast to drink shots out of on and off the course i want you to think your traditional shot ski that you had during your college parties but it's way lighter way less mess no hot glue involved, no glass involved. It's all plastic, you know, plastic cups. It folds right up, can fit it right in the side pocket of your golf bag. It's the perfect thing to whip out on the golf course, bachelor party, a wedding, just hanging out with the boys, PGA championships coming up this week. Go get a wasted wedge, have a watch party. Perfect watch party party tool. Wasted wedge, the best in the game. You guys can check them out at wastedwedge.com. Or find them at Wasted Wedge and follow them on Instagram and Facebook at Wasted Wedge. At Wasted Wedge, Instagram, Facebook, WastedWedge.com. Check out all their products and everything. Remember the name, WastedWedge.com. Pitsy, the MLB run differential is looking a little sum sum like this. We've got the Atlanta Braves in first place in the NL East. The Philadelphia Phillies in second place, the Miami Marlins by virtue of tiebreaker in third place, the Lowell Mets in fourth, and the stolen franchise Nationals in fifth. We'll start with the Atlanta Braves. They are still the only team in the division with a positive run differential. Where do you have the Braves stocked up? Plus 17. Uh, I'm going to have you add a little bit more onto there, and by a little, I mean they are at a plus 52 run oh, differential as oh, they sit at 25 job, and 15. Nice. Um, for some reason, the Braves have just been monsters on the road. They're 15-6 and six this year on the road, 10-9 and nine at home. So maybe that bodes well for that Memorial Day series because we're in Atlanta. Um, Braves have scored 206 runs and only had 154 put up against them. Then we move to the second-place Philadelphia Phillies at 20-20 20 and 20 on the season. Where do you have their run? Only – all right. Uh... I'm, I'm going to go neg- negative 13. They are at a negative 22. Okay. They've scored 173 runs, which is the second most in the division behind the Braves. But they've given up 195 runs. Uh, and to put it in perspective, the Braves, with their run differential and everything going for them, their expected win-loss at this point is their exact record, 25-15. and 15. The Phillies are two games above their expected win-loss with everything stacking up for them. Their expected win loss right now should be 18 and 22. So they've squeaked out some wins that they maybe shouldn't have had. So they're at a negative 22. Then moving on to the Miami Marlins, who we always know have the most ridiculous things going on with that team. They are 20 and 21. Where do you have their run differentials? State? Negative five. For some reason, I feel like it's just absolutely ridiculous for where their record is. Oh, no, it's even worse. They are negative 56. One game under 500. Uh, okay. They've scored, <laughs> they've scored the least amount of runs in the division at 141. They've given up the most at 197. Their expected win loss, with everything breaking for them the way that it has, is 14 and 27. They have won six more games than they should have won so far this year. So, like, is it their pitching? Like, they're like, what it's are we? Unreal. Like, 
It's unreal the fact that they are in a negative 56 run differential and they are one game under 500. Same situation for the Lowell Mets. They're one game under 500 at 20 and 21, sitting in fourth place by virtue of tiebreaker. How do you have their run differential shaken out right now, Pitsy? Negative 23. They are sitting at a negative nine. Okay, negative cool. nine. Their expected win loss is exactly where they are, 20 and 21. They've scored 171 runs this year, given up 180, and sitting in fourth place in the National League East. We love to see it. That's insane. That is absolutely insane to me. Then we move to the basement dwellers, the stolen franchise, 17 and 23 Washington Nationals. Where do you have their run differential sitting? Negative 44. They are in a negative 27. Okay, so close. 156 runs scored, 183 runs against. Their win-loss record expected totals right where they are, 17 and 23. So the only ones that are different are the Phillies and Marlins in the division. Uh, not by much for the Phillies, but by quite a bit for the Marlins. Uh, and looking across the rest of Major League Baseball right now, leading the way run differential-wise in the NL Central, the 19 and 21 third place Chicago Cubs with a plus 29 uh, run differential. That's then insane. we look to the National League West, the Dodgers at a plus 56, which is the best in the National League now as they sit at 26 and 15. The only other teams in the National League with positive run differentials are the 23 and 18 Arizona Diamondbacks, who are at a plus 12. The 22 and 19 Pittsburgh Pirates, who are starting to come down to earth a little bit, they're at a plus nine. And then the first place Milwaukee Brewers at 23 and 17 have a plus 20. Then we move to the American League, where the Tampa Bay Rays lead all of baseball at a plus 120 in the only division that has every team with a positive run differential. Uh, as the Rays, Orioles, Toronto Blue Jays, Boston Red Sox, and New York Yankees are all at plus 16 or better. Nice. The Minnesota Twins are 23 and 18, leading the AL Central. They're at a plus 43. Everyone else in that division is under 500 and in a negative run differential situation. The Texas Rangers at a plus 97 run differential as they sit in first place in the AL West. Four of the five teams in that division have positive run differentials. But Pitts, can you guess the 9-33 and 33 Oakland Athletics run oh differential? That is the worst in baseball by far. All right. Uh, all right. Can, can I get a hint that it's in triple digits? Oh, it's 100% in triple digits. Oh, I love it. Okay, uh, I'm going to go with negative 157. Is that right? You got it. Bam! That's what... That's what... Find the champ, baby. You nailed that right on the head. One, negative 157 is the Oakland A's current uh, run differential as we sit here on Sunday night. I'm pretty fucking good. I'm pretty fucking good. I I just there it is. Take a shot. Shout out to Wasted Wedge. Pitsy took a shot right there and nailed it. Dude, I just chipped in from eighty out, like just <laughs> unreal. Rolled right in there and then boom in the hole. Bang! Bang! That was unbelievable. That was that unbelievable. Um, <laughs> moving right along, the NFL schedule release happened uh, earlier this week on Thursday. <sighs> what a time the NFL schedule releases, Pitsy. What a time it is. It is brought to you by our friends over at Kenwood Beer, the official beer of Underground Sports Philadelphia. Kenwood Beer, uh, it's a refreshing light beer, and they are simply the best in the game. They've been supporting us since day one, and uh, we couldn't be more thankful to have such a supportive beer sponsor in this time of need in Philadelphia. It's a refreshing light beer, 4.1% ABV, 127 calories, 10 grams of carbs. Go to KenwoodBeer.com, use the Kenny tracker, see who has Kenwood on tap in the Philadelphia area. Buy Kenwood at your local Philadelphia area liquor store. Or if you're in eastern Pennsylvania, you can get it at your local Whole Foods. Light body, light calories, plenty of flavor. The best light beer on the planet. Must be 21 or older to do so. And, of course, please drink responsibly. The NFL schedule release happened, Pitts. We've got the Eagles' uh, schedule lined up for who they're playing. And week one has a lot of meaning because it's Eagles-Patriots at Gillette for Tom Brady Appreciation Day. Yeah, I mean... I talked about this on Gillette Gazette a little bit that it's 
a good time to do it, and I like how they made the Eagles be the opponent for them. Uh, just gives that game a little bit more of a you know an emphasis because yeah, it's Week One. You know, defending NFC champions, it's a big game to start out. You know, tonight test the baseline of where the season could go and all that. And then to have Tom Brady, apparently his this is it. This is he's officially retiring. He's not coming back to play. Until Jimmy G gets hurt when he buys into the Raiders like he allegedly is. Then... Dude, if you – okay, I did read about this. If Tom Brady becomes like an owner of the Raiders or whatnot – I could definitely see him doing some Bill Russell type shit where he's playing, owning. Like, it's gonna be like, no, no, you're doing it wrong. And then, like, they go on a three game losing streak, and he, there's like, Tom, you can't play. He's like, no, no, no. And he gets on the field, throws two touchdowns. It's so weird that he's buying into all these Las Vegas teams because he bought into the Las Vegas Aces in the WNBA, too. Yeah, I want, like, Las Vegas, it's to me, it's weird. To the the, the area, I mean, not that he's actually. Brady gonna buy into the Las Vegas Athletics? He's a baseball guy. Big baseball guy. He's a big um, baseball guy, so I could see that for sure. Here is the Eagles' schedule. Week by week, including three preseason games. Week one of the preseason, we're at Baltimore, August 11th. August 17th, home against the Cleveland Browns. And then August 24th, home against the Indianapolis Colts. The Shane Steichen return to Philadelphia. The one coordinator that we actually liked then week one like we mentioned at the new england patriots uh on september 10th then we got absolutely shafted the fact that the defending nat nfc champions are having their home opener on thursday night football is an absolute joke like it's a weekday I get our, our our fans are going to show out no matter what because they always do. Yeah, but the fact yeah. that it's a weekday, people got to work the next day. It's kind of pathetic that you're putting us home opener on Thursday night football. Just a little salty there. Yeah, it's weird. But you know, I feel like you'd get some. The energy's going to be there because it's against our new era rival, the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, and you know what happens. When the Minnesota Vikings play in prime time, Pitsy. Kirk Coupons comes to play. What is this? What is so it? Ray Yoda, rest in peace in the Chantix commercials. <laughs> R.I.P. Minnesota Vikings Thursday night football for the home opener. But then we get a little, a nice little treat after the Thursday night game. You typically have the, you know, the short bye week there, but it's a, extended a little bit because the next game the Eagles have is Monday night football down in Tampa to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Baker Mayfield led Buccaneers, baby. I love it. Let's go. Then uh, back home for one of three one o'clock starts for the Philadelphia Eagles this year. Rest in peace, my sleep schedule. Uh, against the Washington Commanders. It's a Philly then, matchup. Go Birds. Uh, go. Then the following week, 4.05 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday, October 8th, we are at the Los Angeles Rams. Should be a nice easy dub there because the Rams are in a full send rebuild. Oh, full send. Then the following week, we are at the New Jersey Jets facing Aaron Rodgers and everybody's darling team, and I can't wait to put them in their place and make them realize that they are not even the best team in their own division and absolutely trounce the New York Jets. Good. I mean, you need to kill Rodgers. We just need to get rid of Aaron Rodgers. Then on Sunday night football, at home, week seven, the Philadelphia Eagles host Tua Tagovailoa in a matchup of former Alabama teammates as the Miami Dolphins come to town. Jalen Hurts versus Tua. Love it. Love the game. That's going to be a fun game. That's going to be a fun fun game. game. Like Tua, Jalen Waddell, and Tyreek Hill versus Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. Oh. That's going to be amazing. I'm excited. That's going to be a good game. Dolphins are an underrated team. 
Very underrated. It's going to be a very, very fun game. Then my birthday rolls around. I get to celebrate my 30th birthday when the Eagles on the road at that dumpster fire stadium in Maryland as they take on the Commanders. 30? Yeah. Oh, God, dude. You're just... I know, man. I know. Jesus. Yeah. Tell me about it. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Tell me I'm sorry about it. I'm sorry to hear that. Then week nine, first true game in my 30s. Not actually on my birthday. 4.25 p.m. Eastern time at home against the Dallas Cowboys. Go Birds. Then a week 10 bye. I love the week 10 bye. It's right in the middle of the season. Nice little regroup, kind of assess where you're at. But coming out of the bye, things get a little testy and a little tough on the schedule on paper, at least, Pitsy, as we go Monday night football out of the bye. Super Bowl matchup rematch at the Chiefs at Arrowhead, the Kelsey Bowl. Then short week, Sunday at home, Bills Mafia comes to town. An Eagles Bills tailgate, which has been the internet's like dream Super Bowl scenario, is Eagles Bills because of how chaotic the timeline would be, how chaotic the fandoms would be. It would just be all time vibes. It's gonna right happen here. on a on a lesser scale because it's regular season. But Eagles Bills at four twenty five Sunday, right around right after or right before Thanksgiving. Yeah, I was gonna. Machi, uh, machi. I I feel like this is a I did the ideal scenario to come of this is because it's a regular season game. Why don't the fandoms just come together and form the ultimate like tailgate? Like, oh, it's you know, gonna be obviously you're gonna incredible. have your fights and your disagreements and whatnot, but no, like as the tailgate unit, vibes that week are going to be immaculate. Like it'll be Eagles like Eagles fans going through tables, like. The mustard flying everywhere like they do oh in my Buffalo. God, the amount of condiments. Scenes, scenes. I can't wait. Then, week 13, we get the NFC Championship game rematch. Who knows who's going to be playing quarterback for that stupid ass organization? Eagles, Niners, 4 25 p.m. Eastern Time. I can't wait. I can't wait for the Birds to absolutely trounce them again. That team. They are. They have become the biggest losers in my eye. I hate that we advocated for Debo Samuel to win the Nickelodeon MVP uh, during the Slime Time game a couple years ago because he is the biggest crybaby known to man. Like, eh, we would have won if Brock Purdy played. No, you fucking wouldn't have. Get the fuck out of my face. You, you were terrible in that game. They act like Brock Purdy never stepped on the field. Brock Purdy was yeah. on the field, and he got absolutely shit raced. Yeah, I remember him not playing well at all. Terrible. Absolute terrible. I can't wait to destroy them again. Then we get Sunday Night Football, Week 14. Happy holidays, everybody, in Jerry World. Eagles at Cowboys, December 10th, Sunday Night Football. Then December 17th, we head back out to the Pacific Northwest, and it's Eagles Seahawks. Or as the Tennessee Titans uh, schedule announcement video said, Eagles, Eagles from <laughs> Pittsburgh. <laughs> Dude, that was so... Eagles. <laughs> that was we'll get awesome. into the schedule release videos for sure. Uh, then week 16, Monday night football. Monday afternoon football, I should say. Christmas Day, Eagles, Giants. Great matchup. Bet the mortgage responsibly on Boston's got touchdowns all day, every day. Oh, my God. All day. And then, finally, the long-awaited return of that shithead, unprepared, tampering fuck, Jonathan Gannon and the loser Arizona Cardinals, New Year's Eve, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. What a perfect alignment for Eagles Cardinals. You're telling me everybody gets to go out to the Eagles game during the day and absolutely shit hose Jonathan Gannon and watch the Eagles obliterate the Cardinals and then it's New Year's Eve and everybody's all old Lang Syne and all that good shit. 
That'd be hilarious. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. A happy day. And then week 18 to be determined because it's probably one of those situations where it's either a Saturday or Sunday. Once the schedule progresses, uh, we are at the New York football New Jersey Giants. Mm -hmm. I I love the schedule. I think genuinely, no disrespect to your Patriots. The Eagles could start this season 9-0 and if things break their way in the first nine games. Like I mentioned, this is the first nine games for everybody. To put it in perspective. At New England, home against the Vikings. At Tampa, home against the Commanders. At the Rams, at the Jets, home against Miami. At Washington, home against the Cowboys. Things break your way. You play the way that you're capable of playing as this Philadelphia Eagles team, as we know them too. There's no doubt in my mind they could start nine and zero. Yeah, yeah, I think that I I, I would agree that the second have... half of the schedule is a little bit different. Yeah, a little. We'll probably different. lose some games in there, whether it's you know the Chiefs, the Bills, hopefully not the 49ers, because fuck that team. You'll probably split with the Cowboys. Seahawks game is going to be a little tough. So there's some games in there that you may lose. But I like the schedule for the Eagles a lot. I do. I, yeah, it's a good schedule to to have. I know the Patriots have the toughest schedule in the NFL right now. So I, think I would, we have I the toughest love. one in the NFC by win percentage from last season. Interesting. But okay. if you want to be the champs, you got to beat the champs. Woo! Um, Rick, Rick you and I both agreed the schedule release videos. We love them. The top oh my god, they're were, the best. We're by far and away, in no particular order, Titans, Chargers, Eagles. Titans doing the man on the street on Broadway was that was the best the best one hands down the Chargers ran it back with anime 2.0 which was phenomenal and if you like de- uh, paying attention to detail and so little many nuances, Easter eggs in there Easter like, eggs yes it was beautiful unbelievable and then the Eagles introduced the schedule with everybody's dogs including the Eagles team dog including the Phillies new team dog like who doesn't love dogs I and the Patriots one I will love because they had McCordy go to the retirement house and they did a whole thing of him like at the Patriots retirement house and little like, Oh, you know, uh, they're playing this, like on this guy, like for instance, the first game being the Eagles, it was him watching TV and it was the guy with the bird on his head going, go birds, fly Eagles fly. And it was like, Oh, Monty watched. G that's my guy. Yeah. He had, he made the Patriots video. He's so like guy. I like I that. Love Monty. That was one of my favorites too. So and then I, I gotta give a he shout. He does out a rap player. for every like big game, like freestyles on the timeline. Really? It's well, so I'll have, I'll have to send you some of the video. Monty's the best. And then I like the the Bears one because they had two of my favorite, I would say celebrities, media people, whatever. Uh Annie Ager, who who doesn't love Annie Ager. And then you had Seth freaking Rollins. I mean, just so good. The he, Jaguars the, you... one was phenomenal with the fake writers' room, like just doing the NFL script thing. Yeah, it was great. Uh, the Broncos ran it back with the Office. I love that. Uh, the Bills did it where like the the players were like living out like their their actual like nine to five career dreams. Like Devin Knox was, or Dawson Knox was delivering newspapers, and or no, he was getting trained. Uh, and completing his forklift training, Josh Allen was delivering newspapers. Like it was very funny. Yeah, um, it's not. It's it's driving a forklift is not easy. Just, just that is know. like the the day the schedule release comes out. That is the day that the social media team cooks. Oh co- yeah, straight cooks. So job well done to all the uh, the schedule release videos and everything. Um, the Philadelphia Flyers, Pitsy. They it's rare that we talk about them on this show simply because they've very been rare inept and very disappointing. Uh, they hired their new, uh, their new people in the front office and it's a, it's a new era of Philadelphia Flyers hockey. I'm going to pull up the uh, press release here that they put out as uh, very interesting announcement per se so the new president of hockey operations is keith jones played for the flyers played for a number of organizations he's been on the national broadcast for uh the nhl 
He's worked in Philly Radio at WIP, and he is now your new president of hockey operations. And Danny Briere named the new general manager of the Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah, I, I am. I love. Uh, let me get out in front of this and say I love Keith Jones, the broadcaster. I love Keith Jones, the personality. I think he is fantastic at that and like being a, a personality on the air. Am I skeptical about the way him being put into a, a president of hockey ops position without any prior experience? Sure, I think everyone should be. Like, there's there's no reason to not be skeptical. Um, so I'm a little worried there, but we'll see what happens. And I think the worry comes in because we've seen this happen before. We've seen the Flyers hire former players and, and do this song and dance. And it just doesn't work out. Why I'm less skeptical about the Danny Briere hiring as GM is he was working for another one of the, the minor league teams that the Comcast Spectacore ownership group owns in their front office as an assistant GM or as the GM. So he at least has that front office experience of working in that position. Here is the statement that the Flyers put out 8.30 a.m. on May 11th. The caption on Twitter and probably all the social media pages, Welcome to a new era of orange. The Philadelphia Flyers organization was built on relentless ambition and loyalty to this city. When you're playing for Philadelphia, you're playing to win and you're giving it your all. That's the bottom line because when you represent this city, nothing less is acceptable. That extends beyond the ice too. It's about character, sacrifice, integrity, and most importantly, resilience in every single thing we do. When you don the orange and black, you're held to a specific set of standards and you're expected to show up and work your ass off. This is a team press release every single day. It's not about doing things the right way. No excuse. Or it's about doing things the right way. No excuses. No shortcuts. This is a new era of hockey, and we're building a new foundation for the future. New ways to work, new ways to train, and new ways to win. We have new voices, new perspectives, and new plans. But this is still Flyers hockey, so the goal remains the same. Win. Welcome to a new era of hockey. I read this and I, it was odd to me that they put out this statement in the sense that this felt like they were like the flies were fed up themselves. Yeah. You know, it, like the fans and, you know, play what I like, they're going to be fed up and the media, like all that, like that's out there. But this was like breaking a little bit of that fourth wall where it's like, all right, like, listen, we hear you. We know what you're saying and it's true. And we're just, hitting the reset button yep we're gonna hit it and that's it you know and to be that blunt i would say in a statement like that change is coming you, you know you don't say those words like you to like work your ass off in a team press release that's that's hitting i another like note. it i like i it. like Spunk. it too and i'm not a flyers guy you know that's the one right. team in philly i despise and even i will as the champ the champ always gives credit where credit is due and I got to give credit to the Flyers here for really committing to this. All right, if we need to kind of dig ourselves out of this, we got to be honest with not only ourselves, but with our fans. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a fan of how they did it. Weird, in a sense. I thought it was very strange. Kind of came out of nowhere. That's what it, that's exactly. That's the only reason I found it weird was that it was just like a random drop. Like there was no, you know, statement on social media that, yeah. oh, the, you know, this happened and this, that. Like it was just like these guys were hired. Here's our release. We're here to kick ass. It, so I, I like that element of it. Statement from Danny Briere on being named the general manager. To say this has been a dream of mine would be an understatement. I truly believe this is an exciting time for the Flyers with the steps that we've taken this past season, the way our team has responded to the standard that we set both on and off the ice and the path that we are on. There's a lot of work to be done, but these last few months have only strengthened my resolve and made me even more eager to rebuild this team and deliver this city a Stanley Cup. Rebuild. Keyword there. Flyers are rebuilding, and that is a positive sign. Absolutely. Because it felt like they have like tiptoed around saying that word, doing the thing. They are rebuilding, and that is a breath of fresh air. Statement from Keith Jones. 
Today is one of the most humble and proudest days of my life to be able to lead this team back to the winning tradition that everyone knows it can and should be is a true honor and one that I do not take lightly. I consider the Philadelphia Flyers organization the gold standard of the NHL and professional sports. I've seen how this city and these fans can rally around their team, and there's nothing that compares to that feeling. With this leadership group in place, I am beyond excited and fully confident that we are on the right path and the results will come. It's a new era, like it. everybody. It's a new era of Flyers hockey. It's going to be very interesting to see how it all plays out. I talked to it's Dylan, our day. Flyers yes, expert. Is. I said, what's your what's your confidence level? How do you feel about this? The fact that he and I are on the same level on a 10-point scale, we're both at about a four of excitement, of optimism. There's a lot of things that we have to see. It sucks that you know we get the seventh pick in the draft and didn't win the lottery to get Connor Bedard uh, because we just reward organizations that cover up sexual assault like the Chicago Blackhawks, allegedly. Um so that's a bummer, but you got to see results, and there's going to be a lot of change coming to the Flyers, and hopefully it's positive change. But Jonesy and, and Danny Briere, we'll see. We'll see. what. Because, I mean, like, you have to agree, too. It, it's like we agree with basketball. Like, the NBA is better, even though we, we can't stand them because of our fandoms, respectively. The NBA is better when the New York Knicks are better. I think the NHL is better when the Flyers are a good team. It makes things better. It makes things more intriguing. Like when the Flyers are playing the Penguins, playing the Rangers, playing the Bruins, playing the Devils, like those matchups are elevated that much more when both yeah. teams are good. Yeah, it's a sports city element of it. You know, not only just like it's not because it's the Knicks organization or the Flyers organization right. as a whole. It's, you know, the New York, Philly element of it where you need those big the market character teams. of those teams. Exactly. They like to bring that element, you know, that step up to the national stage so that you can have them on that national stage of ESPN and, um, you know, NBC, whatever. That's when it's good. So I'll agree in that sense that you do need your core cities to be at their best with their teams. Um, but yeah, I just, I hope that I hope they do well, except against the Bruins. I hope the Bruins still beat them eight nothing. But you you can agree that like when the Flyers and Bruins are both good, it oh makes the it rivalry, more fun. It makes oh the rivalry, fun. the feud, the great like they're good games. So as a sports fan, I can respect that the Flyers need to be decent at least. You know, not a joke to have good games. You know, uh, if they, it's it's a lot more fun to watch the Bruins beat the Flyers 4-3 in overtime rather than 5-1 in just a boring snooze fest, you know? so It's more fun it, watching the Flyers come back and, and win a series in 2010. To yeah, you Cup know, finals. Just, yeah, it's fun for you. So everyone wins there. You know, there's a Philly team that can beat the beat, the, beat Boston. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, <laughs> over a decade. Um, yeah, we'll see what happens with the Flyers. Uh, do you want to touch on the Union quick before we get into Taylor Swift? Big brawl in the Union game. Yeah, uh, They beat Colorado. Matt showed me the clip today. Player comes up, pushes the Union goalie, Andre Blake, from behind and, like, pushes him into the wall. Whole brawl ensues. Player from Colorado does, like, a whole rugby tackle and, like, was like, what did I do? Like, like I don't know what it is, Philly and Colorado. Just, They're, dude, you know, we got, we got We got Phillies and Rockies this weekend, Union and, and Colorado. Uh, I think it's, like, Rapid City FC or something like that. Uh, in the MLS, and then obviously the Embiid Jokic rivalry, like Philly and Denver. Philly. <laughs> it, there, there's something there. Something, there's in something that, there. That I don't know what water. It is. It was a water. <laughs> something in that mile high uh, that is causing Philly and Colorado to it might feud. be something in the air. You know, some vapor or something. Uh, let's um, let's get into to the Taylor Swift stuff. Hits is. She was in Philly this weekend for three shows. Incredible. And <laughs> Yo. Patty Pitts. The fuck is up, bro? 
Oh my god, are you the <coughs> are you the caller? Are you Delco Danny? You know who the fuck it is, bro. Oh it's Delco god. Danny in the house. I found underground studios and I infiltrated the place. Dude, so nice to actually see you. I'm the champ, Patty Pitts. Nice to actually see you in person. I know yeah, we've not under these circumstances. Oh, fuck your fucking Boston Celtics, man. Whoa. They fucking ruined my mother's day. My you know mom, what? my mom was miserable. Why the fuck did the Sixers hate moms? I don't do dude, Danny. I don't know. I, I don't know it's why. Unbelievable, bro. I, it was unbelievable on the other side of the coin. But great to see you. We've we've heard so much about you. We've heard from you on the show. And now we get to actually put a face to the voice. And you know, the fact that you found Underground Studios before the champ did, I'm happy that you did. I we'll talk after the show about where the location is because it's it's tough down here. Yeah, but they great. shipped me in a they shipped me in a box, bro. I was all contorted like it what? was like a like a America's Got Talent thing going on over there. Jeez, they they did not fly you out in style. No jet blue, not even Delta. I was That's in tough. I was in a box, bro. I don't even know how I got in the box. I don't even know how I got here, but you know, I infiltrated a place and now I'm just trying to I'm trying to get a job here, you know. I'm trying to work for underground sports because you know I'm the first caller. I think I deserve that. I think you do too. You brought a lot of great insight during the, the Eagle season. I loved when you called in every week. One of my favorite things, and now to actually see you in, in person. You got a mic in front of you, and let's ride. I'm I'm so happy. Yeah, the mic see. looks kind of nice in front of me, right? It's not a fucking cell phone that I'm calling in on. It's not like WIP no. or anything like that. It's stupid radio. It's, I can say whatever the fuck I want over here. And that's what we do here. We say whatever the fuck we want. It's really nice. Happy now, to have you. You got some audacity wearing a fucking Celtics jersey on a Philly show, bro. Yeah, it's it's called being loyal. Uh, and being true to myself, I mean, I am the champ of the peeps, the Boston peeps, the Patriot peeps. And, you know, I, I feel like it was appropriate because, um, I mean, this man, yeah, is... get that shit out of here. No, bro. Come on. Let's, let's, let's be civil here. Like I already had to deal with my mom, like calling me complaining that mother's day got ruined because of the fucking Celtics. And now I got to see you wearing the fucking cell. I thought we were boys, bro. Yeah, we are, but I have to show my true fandom at least it's green you got a green team that i'm a fan of so like yeah, it's a better shade of green though than that fucking shit well i mean the kelly green is is very okay celtics and the whole era aura i would say of boston here okay the irish people my people okay so let's not i saw the patriots and the eagles are playing each other week one up there at gillette bro I know you're gonna be there. That'd be nice to see you. It's kind of cool. Though. Them tickets are fucking expensive, dude. Take Bleep Master is really screwing us right now. I'm not a fan of it. Sorry, really? I had to cough. I didn't want to put it on the microphone. No, that's smart. See, you're learning from a caller. You just you already have that little expertise there to step away from the mic. Hold on, I got another one. It's it's from being in that box, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what well, the the the. the air in there is just like you're really stuffing yeah up it was it was pretty not ideal you know you saw it's taylor finished. swift was in town bro i did dude. she confirmed not... she's an eagles fan thank god she said you know, that lyric wasn't about to ban the eagles she said you know i respect them and everything but the eagle shirt it's the philadelphia eagle shirt that she's talking about yeah <laughs> i don't know what i don't know what people were saying about the eagles shirt with it the band I, I, when anyone hears Eagles, my mind goes Philly. Yeah, and especially Boston since College. she's from here, you know what I'm That's saying? What like, I mean. She's from here adjacent. Yeah, what's the, what's, the, I know she's like the countryside. What is that part? <laughs> I'm not, Jesus, you, you got to get that shit out you know, of you. You got Diet Coke over here or something? Like that, uh, I got Dubby Energy in oh, here. Yeah, shout out to them. I love that Dubby shit, bro. They're the best in the you, game. You're on it? Yeah, oh, yeah. It keeps me fucking energized. <laughs> Thank you. What you, Hold on one second, bro. <laughs> oh, those, dude, you got some great arms on you, Danny. I just, I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> yeah, Dubby keeps me absolutely energized, bro. That's how I get to call into all these shows. <laughs> yeah, and then you got the energy to do so. I love it. It's awesome. Oh, it's great. But yeah, I don't know why people thought it was the Eagles band over the team i just i think that's banana land oh hold on i gotta fix this chair behind me 
There we go. Oh my god, Danny, you're a hoot. You know, you're just you're. Hilarious. Hey, I'm just here for the people. You know what I mean? You're you're here for the peeps. You know, I love that. I, I'm I think I'm gonna be fan. around for for a while. So you might see me on yeah. some more stuff. You know, maybe I'll pop up on some other shows on this here network and everything. I called into the lacrosse show too because Philly lacrosse is that stuff. I can't believe. The NCAA ain't give the boys credentials for, yeah, what for the, the championship. Yeah, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that nonsense, Danny? I don't know why he ain't getting credentials. OTB is like one of the best lacrosse That's podcasts. That's the number up. one lacrosse hub out there, bro. And the NCAA is just gatekeeping you. I don't like that. Bullshit, Danny. man. We should probably go uh, a little protest ourselves. Yeah, let's what? do it. But I, I, I'm going to head out of here. Uh, I threw KB in the corner, so I'm going to let him get back in his chair. Yeah, but. dude. Yeah, get him back. We miss KB. Great to see you, though, Danny. Hey, always a pleasure. Hey, you too, bro. Oh my god. Oh man. Oh my god. Oh man. Well, he came out of nowhere. Dude, yeah, you from caller to resident and underground. Dude, it's nice to actually see a face to Danny. You know what I mean? We heard his voice all throughout the Eagles yeah, season. It was, like a, it was just like a profile picture. I, I wouldn't I I wouldn't expect the Skull cap and black shirt, you know, but it kind of goes with them. I'm, I'm a fan of that. Yeah. One of a kind, that Delco Danny. You said it. Maybe you we should hire it. him. I think he might be. He, he, let's, see how, let's see if he's got legs. I, I don't know if he has those or not. <laughs> God, I'm a, I'm a wizard. It's awesome. But yeah, Taylor Swift pits. I know you and Danny just had a nice little conversation as I got thrown into a corner. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, maybe we don't. <laughs> he just makes himself known, just throwing you in the corner. I'm going to talk now. I was on the bleachers. He must be the cheer captain. Uh, yeah, Taylor Swift, go. though, in Philly this week and uh, full blown confirms that she is an Eagles fan as a multitude of videos came out from her concert. Um and when the song came up, she's got the lyric, you know, my Eagles t-shirt hanging from the door. There were people dressed with, like, door costumes and an Eagle shirt hanging off of them. It was unbelievable. Um, she full-blown said, you know, a lot of people ask me about this, but I grew up watching Eagles games with my dad. and I, I grew up an Eagles fan. I, I love and respect the Eagles, the band, but come on, guys. This is, this is all about the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, absolutely. Eagles tweeted the video and said, in her Go Birds era – good caption that's a good that's a good tweet good tweet um shout out to everybody that uh that went to the concert it looked unbelievable like i'm not like like i i can enjoy taylor swift and some of her music i i'm not a sad music uh connoisseur per se but she's got some bangers uh from the past and my childhood and uh yeah the I concert thought. just looked unbelievable she puts on a great show. I have a lot of friends who are huge Swifties. So I'm seeing on their Snapchat story, I had one friend. Actually, did you hear about her show in Nashville that was uh, delayed for like three hours because of a thunderstorm? Yeah, I and, did. And you would like you would think it was going to get canceled, but she, they, she just delayed it and then played till 1 a.m. That's My awesome. five friends that were there. Like, that's the type of performer she is so I, I i'll give her props there that she's such that's a concert you have to see live you know you have to see taylor swift live she puts on such a great show i know she's done a lot of shows at gillette too so like that's you know it, she just does a really good job with her shows i'd like to go to one i will say not the biggest 50 but i'd love to go to one yeah it was a, a wild weekend in philadelphia for sure um that's all we got for you guys this week shout out to the surprise appearance from Delco Danny. Uh, Good to see him. We'll see what happens with the Philadelphia 76ers. And uh, it's Philly season, full send, everybody. So gear up. Make sure you guys are following us at Underground PHI, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook.com slash Underground Sports PHI, uh, Twitch.tv slash Underground Sports PHI. Follow Pitts on Twitter and Instagram at Pat underscore Pitts and at Pitsy35 on the gram. Follow me at KBIZZL311 on Twitter and KBIZZLE11 on Instagram. 
Subscribe to the podcast feed, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Leave those five-star reviews. It really does go a long way for helping this show continue to grow. We're trying to make this our full send careers and, and really turn Underground Sports Philadelphia into our true source of, of income and delivering the best quality fan content out there on the internet for Philly sports fans and everything that we cover here. Uh, so go subscribe and subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at underground sports, Philadelphia. That's where you get full video episodes of this podcast twice a week, every single week and every podcast on our network, clips, interviews, live streams, shorts, all of that on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at underground sports, Philadelphia. We're at 457 subscribers right now, 43 more before Memorial day. Let's make that happen. Uh, and of course, this show presented by the city of Vineland and whether you're a company looking to expand, relocate, or are a new business startup, selecting the right location is critical to your success. Vineland, New Jersey offers both an affordable business location and an excellent quality of life. The city's economic development department is a one-stop source for moving your project through the development and approval process. Their goal is to make this process as smooth as possible and to provide the fastest turnaround times in the region. If you are considering potential locations for your operation, contact the Vineland Economic Development Team at 856-794-4100. That's 856-794-4100. Vineland, New Jersey, where it's always growing season. Make sure you get your merch at phiapparel.co. Use code UNDERGROUND for 10% off any and all merch orders there. It's the most effective and direct way to support everything we're doing here. So go get your merch. Tag us when you get it. We want to see where you're rocking your merch from. And big thank you to Main Auto LLC, Security 21 Security Systems, Paul J. Gillespie Incorporated, and the Dental Wellness Center of Vineland for their continued support of this podcast. This has been episode number 533 of Underground Sports Philadelphia. The Sixer season is dead. I might be dead inside. And we'll have our Say La Vie on Wednesday night. But until then, for Pitts, I'm KB. Getting the heck up out of here. Peace. Go.